everyone and welcome to Red United TV and welcome to the catch up volume 15. Wonderful week so far for Manchester United. Yep, so far. I want this wonderful week in, considering Sunday, maybe a couple of good days. Uh, let me just retract and say a couple of good days. You know, welcome guys. Of course, if you're new to this channel, remember to subscribe, smash that like button, share, and also press that notification bell up. I've got my two boys beside me. I've got a mook. What are you saying today? Well, you can tell already, man, smiling and now. Uh... Obviously, five, like, <laughs> after yesterday, I have to, man, like, I ain't been like, I ain't felt like this for a very long time. So thank you, Manchester United, for putting me in that good mood. And Jess, what are you saying today, bro? Five mil. <laughs> five mil. <laughs> so you get me. You get me. You got five on it. You get me. We got five on it, five guys. On it. Fantastic result against RB Lightship yesterday. Five nil Manchester United at Old Trafford. Our first win at Old Trafford for the for the season. season. To win five nil and to win in that kind of style, playing a completely different formation um, with the diamond with all those midfielders on the pitch. Was supposed to see. I loved it. I loved the performance from Pogba. I loved the performance from Fred. I loved the performance from Van Beek. Mark Thrasher's cameo appearance. Bruno um, Fernandez's cameo appearance. Also, Mason Greenwood's first goal. First touch, first shot in the Champions League. Equals a goal. That guy. Gunman Greenwood. You don't know. You don't know, guys. Of course, we're going to go straight into that match. We venture straight into that match against RB Leipzig. Pretty much very impressed with the whole game, the whole 90 minutes, guys. Um, Although I fell asleep in the last 10 minutes, missed two games, two, two goals, sorry guys. Apart from that, uh, the performance from the players, the tactics was spot on. Oli, today, he got it right. He got it right. You know, it's not every day I say it, Oli gets it right. But credit where it's due, Oli deserves some praise, of course, for going for this diamond formation and imp implementing all those midfielders in. It was nice to see, especially seeing Matic playing from the base. Fred. Tenacious, covering every bit of grass, mm -hmm. every blade of grass you can think of on that pitch. I didn't stop you on that. I actually voted for Fred. I, saw, I woke up this morning to Manchester United app saying, play of October, it was Marcus Rashford, Bruno Fernandes and Fred. Yeah. I voted for Fred. You oh, voted for Fred. Yeah, Fred was impressive um, this month. So I, I believe he should get played a month, but everyone yeah, votes at different. the end of the day. Yeah. So guys, I'm going to switch it straight to a MOOC. <laughs> How are you feeling after that 5-0 right. victory? To be honest with you, the 5 nil victory came in as a surprise. I wasn't that what Kevin had usually say, he wasn't ready. <laughs> I wasn't at all. But I just got to be optimistic. It was beautiful. Like we've been stressing. I think the players did a brilliant job giving us that I don't know if you look and tell. We can see the teeth coming out, everything coming out. I've been smiling all day. Mm. I can't remember last time we we Manchester United won. That made me really excited. And not just about the win, but the performance, the players, and that. Oh, uh, um, my man said, the 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 from um, the tactics and formation that Oli used. I don't know if you lot remember, we've used this before. Against mm -hmm. Everton. No, no, not on the yeah. Oli. On the Van Gaal. Damon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We played with Damon. That like, triangle, actually. Like, Damon, Damon, triangle and that. It worked. The only difference with Oli, I feel like we've got more players. He, I think, still for the Premier League, which, which we didn't have on the Van Gaal. That, so, it didn't work. But, yes, it was brilliant. I was impressed with Van der Beek. Like, just the shadow... It was just too brilliant, like too brilliant. And this is what we were saying, Oli, why can't you start this individual for us? Yeah. And, and he did. Uh, and James, what about you? What, what, what was your thought of that match yesterday? Um, the first half, we did a bit more defending than attacking. So at half time, I was a bit wary thinking, <laughs> can Leipzig possibly get back into the game? But the second half, as soon as we made those substitutions, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Bruno came on, Rashford came on, and just changed the game. Exactly. As they usually do. They changed you the know? game. It used to be Pogba and Van der Beek changed yeah, the game. Yeah. But yesterday was Bruno and yeah. Rashford. Brilliant. And Pogba and Van der Beek both played very well. On the left-hand side, when we start James, for me, it's like playing ten with 10 men. You know? But Pogba was in the, on the left-hand side of the diamond. You saw him running out to the left. He actually put in a bit of an effort yesterday. So... 
Hands up to him. He didn't um, lose the ball. Hardly not. No, even on, on BT Sport, this is defensive effort yesterday. It was brilliant. He was tracking back. I was tracking surprised. Back. When I saw him running back, I was like, swear down. Pogba, is, are you right? Even, <laughs> Ollie tapped him when he came out. So you did well, my son. Mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. And I was, I, I was impressed. Yeah. The formation for this game was good. Um, we've got a lot of midfielders. So for us to implement a diamond allows us to play to our strengths, which is our midfield. True. And it also allows us to play without James, yeah, which yeah. makes me happy. So yeah, good 5-0 win. Rashford, my man of the match, of course, with the hat-trick. He was your man of the match? He was my man of the match? He could have scored four, but he gave the penalty to Martial. Such a humble guy. Brilliant game, 5-0, top of the league. Not just humble, top of the group, but Rashford. that's... Oh, he made a difference yesterday. He's teaching you, like we always say, this ain't about us. We go look after the young generation. Mm -hmm. What he did yesterday was different, was special. It teaches you, we go, we all go learn how to share stuff, or trying to look out for each other. Matteo had a bad start, not bad start, but he ain't really been active in the few games that he's played. Mm -hmm. So for him to have the penalty given to him by um, Rashford yesterday, I feel like Rashford, Thank you, Rashford, man. No one did that. We, we love you. We actually do love you. Team player. You, not just the team player. I think you're a special breed. Like, you're just special. Just stay consistent, please. That's all we ask from you. Consistency, my brother. Come on. Consistency. Oh, who was your man in the match? Do you know what? I was going to give it to Fred or Van der Beek. But Rashford took it. Mm. Rashford can't, took it. That he took it. Like, that had trick. Yeah, it was good finishing. Patrick. Like, that finishing yesterday was brilliant. Was I don't I think the second goal was too beautiful. Where he ran through the defense and just lit up the shot. The pass from Bruno. The pass from Bruno, guys. Mm. How do you Amazing. call that word? Ex it is looking. it exquisite? I know. I know. I know. It was exquisite. <laughs> Let me just exquisite <laughs> that Bruno and actually asked my friend this afternoon. Are Portuguese players or Portuguese white males are they arrogant? And she was like, yeah. And I like the arrogance from Bruno. How do you like it? I really do myself, man. I really like it. Who else impressed you? Um, Martial was very good. Of course, Greenwood. Mm -hmm. Exceptional. His first ever shot in the Champions League equaled a goal. Greenwood, stop being late for training. Whatever nonsense you're doing, just be on point so we can see more of you, okay? <laughs> That's what we want to do. We want to see the best of Mason Greenwood, isn't it? Great. Martial impressed me somewhat, even though we just got the penalty goal, but he was okay. Van der Beek was brilliant. He had a good 60 minutes, I'm not going to lie to you. I do want to see more of him. Uh, his ability on good. the ball, keeping the ball, mm -hmm. ball retention. Mm -hmm. Superb! Mm -hmm. Superb! Just everything. He did not let go of that ball. Mm -hmm. He didn't lose the ball. I didn't think, um, what's his name? McTominay. I don't think he had to play yesterday. He didn't have to. Go no, but he did do something. He did do something, but he didn't he changed, have to. Change the tempo of the game. He didn't have to. You could have just kept it. We, we we were all over them. It was a brilliant performance. But like we said, the system that we used yesterday, I hope the players get used to it. I hope it's just a glimpse of something that we will never see again. Do you, do you think he will use that system? Because like I said before, my, my reaction is like, if he brings the trash that we took out last week and bring it back again, I'll be pissed off. No. If he goes back with those players that he played in the Premier League, I'll be pissed off. Mm -hmm. I want to see the same thing that we did against RB Leipzig, implement that towards the Arsenal game because we need that. Mm -hmm. We haven't been consistent with everything or anything that we do, even with the manager. His tactics, philosophy, and formation can be consistent, and it worries me a lot. Being a fan, I'm used to say on the fellow saying one system and one starting team. Whoever's gonna come on, coming off the bench, mm -hmm. we go number one. We go from one to eleven. That start every single game, except though, like if you go like Comunicio or um, 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 EFL Cubs, them mm -hmm. small, small late uh, them competition, the other players can get chance. I want to see that from Oli because as it is right now, I'm really excited to see the players that I've got on my team and just my not my forward. Yeah, it's I brilliant. agree with you. We do need a bit of consist consistency. We need, for me, at least seven or eight players that are going to be playing week in, week out. I understand that the fixtures are a bit congested because of the Champions League. We're playing midweek, weekend, midweek, weekend. We still need that consistency within the team for us to be able to push on and 
collect wins on the bounce. You can't keep chopping and changing. Yeah, so Oli has to find that level of consistency or oh, that right balance, especially in games. We have Arsenal this weekend on a Sunday. I don't want to lose that game against Arsenal, especially against the Gunners, you know? Mm-hmm. Bunch of dickheads as well at the end of the day. When think, <laughs> I don't know, they had the audacity to call us shit when they've been shit for 15 years. But yeah, but yeah, we've only been shit for seven years, you know? So there's there's, there's levels to being only shit, you know? Only. There is actually levels to being shit. You've been shit for I'm 15, happy you said levels to be years. shit. We yeah. won trophy that they haven't won. Mm. They, We've been shit for seven years, but we still won the FA Cup, which they've been winning. They've been winning it too. We won the Europa, they ain't won that. So they can't really call us shit. I'm just thinking like, we've done better in terms of, or oh, let me say, or oh, random, within the last seven years, the national, better than national. Yeah. You shouldn't call us shit. Yeah. I won't take that away. I won't take that from them. And that's no fun. No, no, call no, us no. Shit. no. If anything, they've done worse than us. But they've done to worse be than fair, us. fair, we have both. Underperformed. Definitely. Underachieved. Underachieved. Underperformed. Underachieved. Achieved. Under everything. Definitely. So let's see what's going to happen on Sunday. That's good. Well, guys, you let us know exactly what you thought of that match against RB Lightship. Who was your man in the match as well? Who impressed you the most? And whether you think that um, Oli should continue with that same damn information against Arsenal. We move on straight to that game against Chelsea. That dull game. That boring game. The game that we could have won, but... Pff, <sighs> but we didn't. We didn't. We dropped two points. It was really, really disappointing for us to just drop two points, but we could have got three points. That match against Chelsea, dull, dull, dull as hell. You know what, guys? I'll be honest with you. Against Chelsea, I actually thought Oli came outside, came out to manage Manchester United with a condom on. You know, because the man, you're playing it safe. No, definitely, no, 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 no. He's definitely managing Man United sometimes with wearing a jimmy. No, that's not what he said. Because we playing at home, yeah, and we've been more protective. Yeah, and like you mentioned against the game, the Champions League game yesterday, in the first half, I remember my Owen Agrip said Manchester United is playing like they playing away. No, it was Thank actually his calls yeah, that said yeah, yeah. it. Uh-huh. We were playing away. Do you know what? That 6-1 touched us all. Mm-hmm. That 6-1 touched us. It yeah, felt yeah, like... It definitely touched him. It felt like every time we played on Old Trafford, we were playing away. I don't know if you noticed that or if you sensed it, but every time we played in Old Trafford, the team feels that we are playing away. We play more better when you're going away games than playing at Old Trafford. But think about this. Against Chelsea, I feel like both teams were looking for the draw because obviously Chelsea played their three at the back. We played our four two three one, but we had both Metonymy and Fred sitting mm-hmm. at home. Now, I home. felt like we should have had maybe one DM, and it will allow us to play Bruno and Pogba or Bruno and Van der Beek. You know, a bit more creativity. Maybe then we might have snuck a one 0 win, but it was a bit too defensive for me. Um, quickly, I know us as fans, we don't want to be seen three at the back, especially at home. But I felt after the PSG win. We could have kept the same formation. But with the likes of Tellez, I don't know what's going on with him. Tellez has got, got coronavirus. Got yeah, he's been, that's what no he's tested positive. But that's what you haven't wonder. seen him since. Okay. So, Tellez to one side. If we could have played Shaw and Wan-Bissaka as more attacking fullbacks. Again, with the three centre-backs, that will give us an opportunity to put another centre mid who's a bit more creative in there. True. As opposed to having both Scott and Fred True. in a home game, you know? True. We didn't really want to see that. So it was a bit of an anticlimax, to be honest with you. I'm not too upset with the result. Chelsea was always a tough, we def- tough game. We but definitely was playing with 10 men, 10 men, you know, because that, that, that Daniel James guy. Useless! I don't want to say anything. No, but that if, you don't, if you don't remember, like, brothers, if you don't remember, I think on our first show, when we started doing the catch-up together, yes. I mentioned, you asked me, who would you, you like don't to want to see improve? And I said something, because... You know when you, I'm I'm a very observant person, right? Like I not only likes um, James, he actually likes the kid because of his pace and whatever he does the training. And he picks up the cones and, in training. As well. <laughs> Apparently, and he does pick up the cones in training after the training. He's part. humble. I like That's him. So, actually, I actually, <laughs> no, no, no. I actually, like uh, the kid himself. I actually, like the kid. But like we all said, he needs to improve. If he is gonna be starting for Manchester United, he needs to improve. As we all know. Right now, James is not a starting player for Manchester United. He shouldn't be starting. He, shouldn't even so he should be coming in, but Oli likes him. So, 
like I said, it's something that, you know, when you see something over and over again, it's easy for me to accept things. So I actually accepted that he was going to start for us a lot. And that's what I did say, I want to see him improve more if he's going to start. <laughs> and, like, it, but all you don't have to use Fred um, um, on James in certain games. No. Like the Chelsea game, he didn't have to. Mm -hmm. And I feel yeah. like we don't yeah. even have many wingers. So taking James out, that's even more of a reason to play this diamond football with four centre mids in there, Pogba done well coming out to the left, and Fred's always got the energy to come yeah, out to the there, right there was and support a, one there was, there was a balance. Yeah. I didn't stop you lot, yeah? Mm -hmm. You said something that made me smile when you said the damn one, right? Because mm -hmm. we've got enough midfielders that have been doing the thing. But one thing that I think people ain't realising is this. We playing with midfielders, right? But I still believe in the Premier League as it is right now, Manchester United got the best forward. All the strikers put together, we can go face any team. Okay. But if we go midfielder, like the midfield we've got right now, and all is using our midfield, how it's supposed to be used, I still believe we can do 10 times better than Man City. Because Man City got better midfield, but you don't have the strike forwards that we've got so far. You just got Aguero and Jesus. We got he. Like the young kid, let me start from the youngest kid, um, um, Mason, Rashford, um, 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 my favorite player, Mattel. And we just got, um, 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 was it Cavani? And also, don't forget, we also got the our Nigerian brother. He's been on the bench. Ungalo. Yes, very Carlo. Yeah. Oh, so Uncle Ungalo. We, we got five. Uncle. That five amazing forward. I think we should do better. I think the club needs to do better. The manager needs to do better. But oh, definitely, definitely. Like I said before, one thing I've said again, Oli, please, please, when you manage us, don't wear a condom, please. <laughs> I definitely know you don't wear a Magnum or a Durex. It's probably that Pesante kind of cheap brand condom that you probably wear because you, you, you ain't got the big dick to be wearing Magnum or Durex for long, last long. But yeah, Oli, please stop playing it safe. Take risk, you know? Take risk. Go in there raw like I do sometimes, you know. <laughs> you know, not all the time. Twenty four seven condoms, you know. Gotta go on a full attack. True. But like, what did you think of these tactics? For those two games, um, the Chelsea game and the PSG game. Oh, the Chelsea game yeah, and the RB Leipzig game. Now, I would and say selection too. I would say the Chelsea game, as Jake said, I could just. I think we should have done better with the starting team. The players that we used. Like you mentioned as well, we didn't have to use both Fred and, um, and Tom. We didn't have to. That's the game that I believed either Pogba or Van der Beek should have started. It gives us that dynamic um, way of playing because you got two players. He could play midfield and also play number 10. But I don't see Fred or Tom playing number 10. They're just no. going to sit there. And it didn't really help us as a club against Chelsea. So I still believe... That's something that I need to think about because like it's, for me it's a learning process right he, he won yesterday using something different right mm -hmm. i hope he can improve from that not going back to where we were like the, like, like the past few weeks i really pray that i'm just being optimistic Oli, do us good and jess with scott mctominay do we really need to be playing in too tough do you know what i hope i've always liked this kid i like him because he's tenacious he's aggressive on the tackle and he works hard. However, against Chelsea, we didn't need both McTominay and Fred. We didn't need both of them. And we didn't need James. We what would have been ideal James. for me, as I said earlier, the three at the back, off the back of PSG would have been great. It would have given us two strikers. It would have given us a bit more creativity in the middle. But bearing that in mind, also the diamond. Why not have Rashford and Agalo up top? True. A guy was just collecting dust on the bench. Why not have him up top? Give James, sit him down. And Pogba again could have played left of the diamond, coming up to the left as he did against RB Leipzig. But um, performance. I do not really want to complain too much. A point against Chelsea, it sounds a bit pessimistic, but a point of white, we didn't lose. Yeah. But the formation for me wasn't great that day. Well, and the think, team selection wasn't great either. If you think about it, last season... We actually dominated Chelsea, so I still believe we, we should. We, we sh it's something that we should just keep doing. Because one thing I noticed, team or managers are finding it difficult to play against Oli. 
I don't know why. We just struggle against small teams. I've mentioned this before. We struggle against small teams. When it comes to big clubs, Oli actually, for some reason, I don't know what he does, but it worked. Yes, because I believe he's, I don't set, know up, he's set up to face um, big teams. He, he doesn't know how to play the little and, teams. Well, this is what I'm saying. He doesn't know how to do that. If you can't balance in life, like my favorite word is compromise, right? If you can't compromise what you do as a human, I don't think you have to be called human. You could be called alien or robot or something. Oli, this is for you. We want you to compromise with what you do. If you can do the same thing against the bigger open, opponents that got more quality, better, whatever, I believe you should do the same thing against small teams. The way we play against small teams, it's appalling. It's stressful to watch. Like, half of the time I've got tears in my eyes, but they won't come out. <laughs> and that's because I love this club too much. So Oli, please do us a favour and work on your tactics information. So yes, guys. Of course, um, one of the biggest debates was the omission of Donny van der Beek. Um, especially, the, he didn't play against Chelsea. He um, didn't play too much against PSG. Played a few minutes again against what? Who did before? Brighton. Brighton. As well. And of course, you've had his agent. You've had a couple of Dutch um, legends, such as Van, was, uh, van Basten, van Basten was about to saying that. that he's made the wrong choice. Twice. And etc. Whereas us as well as fans were asking, why why did we sign him if you're not going to include him? You had Patrice Evra as well had to what's it called um reassure people that he didn't mean that we don't we don't need Van der Beek, but he had to explain the fact that the fact that we haven't been playing him means that we don't need him. We have players like Pogba, we have players like Bruno Fernandes who are a bit ahead and a bit better than Van der Beek. So why did we sign him if we're not going to use him? But of course, I believe we need him. We need him. We, it's for some reason, my opinion is that why is it a problem when we have squad that Manchester United shouldn't have squad depth? Mm -hmm. It's a, it, like we should only have a starting eleven, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm fed up with that. I've, I, we, he, we get our ex players as well, Gary Neville and all these people talking nonsense. But we, why did we sign these players? When they, no, mm -hmm. we need squad depth regardless. Like, mm -hmm. we, no one complains when Man City are, are signing these good players to put Cheap. on the bench. No Cheap. one complains when Liverpool are signing these good players to put on the bench. But people want to complain about us. Pisses me off. But another silver was when he signed to Man City his first season. But he's on, on the bench. bench. He's on the bench. No one complains about that. No one says why is Leroy signing on the bench all the time. He mm -hmm. should be starting. Why is Mares on the bench? He should be starting. But when, when we start to get squad depth, people are complaining about our squad depth. Because we are Manchester United, and it hurt me so much that when we get mentioned or we some of uh, the media to describe Manchester United, they name us as one of the greatest clubs in this country. And every time we do something good or positive, we get good response from the media, right? And every time something negative or something that the club don't like or something like, for example, we losing against, um, um, was it, or was it called Old Trafford? Was it the first game? Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace. That was painful. Because I don't think we deserve there. But like I said, we started this season with uh, with the f only one one only, how do you call it? Um, um, was it how do you call it before the preseason match against mm. Aston Villa mm -hmm. and we lost it. The only reason I'm mentioning this because I'm a person that always do referencing right, and I always track back and remember things that we played. So like the the vote on the Mourinho it happened, and we had a very terrible start. I just pray to God that this don't happen to us this time around. And Oli, like mm. I said again needs to work on his tactics and know what type of players need to play we got quality i mean quality midfield our midfield and forward i'm really really gassed about it it's just defend them a little bit shaky about and i still think um lending is the best defender of manchester right now what about van der beek what we're talking about van der beek though. that's what i'm saying van der beek needs mm. to be playing more yeah he needs to play more because, like I mentioned, we got a very brilliant midfield, but Oli don't know what to do with his players. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do you think the media have the rights and all those people? Uh, just no. have we live, we live in, she, we live in a, made a mistake. We do you think in, it's a mistake? No, it's not a mistake. It's Everyone got cho it's, 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 it's a choice. Like, uh, you know, like I said, we're entitled. One thing that the West did to us human is give us democracy, which I don't believe it's 100% democracy. I still believe it's 60%. And they give us freedom of speech. Everyone is entitled to what they got to say. Of course. 
So me saying what the media saying about what we going through don't really bug me. All I care about is the end result. And Jess, oh, do you think you're talking nonsense? Um, do you know what, bro? I'm gonna echo what you said. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's freedom of speech. People are allowed yeah. to say what they want. Me personally, now I feel like it, Oli did not sign Van der Beek. <laughs> One milli, he did not sign Van der Beek. <laughs> Why did you say that? He was told that you're gonna sign Van der Beek, and he had to. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. But okay, but, okay. but he but the, during the transfer, he was he involved. He's someone that spoke to um, Van der Beek. He spoke to Van der Beek. Maybe he would, they had conversation. Ed and told him to go and speak to Van der Beek <laughs> because for me. <laughs> I don't understand why you're spending, how much is it, 40 million euros 40 million, yeah. on a player and not really using him too tough. I feel like, if anything, he might be there as a replacement for Pogba when he eventually leaves. But we need to see a bit more of him. For his Dutch side, he's been playing in, for the Holland team. He's scored in the weekend. 90 minutes, playing, no problem. So why we don't see more of him, I'm not too sure. Um, we do need squad depth. It's not too much of a problem that he's on the bench for now. He's only been here for, what, six to eight weeks. So the likes of Abbaston and all them men coming out saying he's made the wrong decision, I think you guys are very stupid. As legends as you are, you're very stupid. It takes time, you know? So we can't force it. But at the same time, I'm sure Oli did not. Uh, I'm going to play a bit time. of devil advocate. Because at the end of the day, <laughs> guys, you, at the end of the day, you, we don't know exactly the words that were spoken to um, Van der Beek mm -hmm. and... Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer told him, I'm going to bed you in slowly. A couple of minutes, they're coming so he can make you watch, so you can understand and grasp the league and see and look at the pace of the league mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Because you never know. You never know. They've had that conversation behind his closed door. So it can't just be like, oh, Ole doesn't want him, doesn't want to play him. It may be the fact that he might be just slowly bedding him in. I remember Klopp done the same thing with Fabino. It took Fabino three to four months before he starts getting heavily involved True. in the starting lineup of, of, mm -hmm. of Liverpool's team. And I'm not, me, I'll be honest with you, the way he's doing things, yes, I understand. Bed these players slowly to see the league because sometimes you can't just walk in there and you might, may, may, may not be able to handle the rhythm, the rhythm of the Premier League. You may lose the ball so quick, you know. Only certain players can come and hit this ground running. Yeah, well, yeah, this is what I'm saying. You said, to be fair, I'm happy you said certain players. Mm -hmm. Bruno done, so, it. Bruno done it. So why That's can't Bruno. he gives like this is what I'm saying? Why can't he give Van der Beek this team opportunity that Bruno had? The reason why is because Oli at that time was desperate to have a number ten. Now he's got a number ten. He doesn't I won't be playing. I won't be playing um McTominay Fred if I go Van der Beek. Yeah, it's too defensive. I can't. I can't do that. We need more creativity in there. So yeah. we need one holding. And like you're saying, Van der Beek and someone else, or maybe even Pogba and Fernandez, you know. Van der Beek can play number ten shadow. Could also play you holding. Or it could be an eight, yeah. You get what I mean? Like yeah. so, you we, we didn't just get a player, like he said before. That I think when we signed Van der Beek, as right as a cop, the word that he used was midfield maestro. <laughs> so why he's on the bench? Oli can only be the one to answer that. But let's move on. Of course, guys, we move it straight on to Paul Labile Pogba's in situation with the son, the son, and also other presses, claiming that the guy himself has retired from French football regarding the French president's um, words against um, Muslim terrorists. Obviously, fake news. Pogba himself came out on his Instagram account accusing the son of um, blasphemy, saying nonsense such as fake news, fake fake article, saying that all these things are not true and they, and they never check their references. In fact, insulting their, you know, their credentials. It's credentials, that's good. Of course, mm -hmm. it's, it's their Brilliant. credentials. All these news outlets say, say that um, Pogba retired from France because of X, Y and Z. He had to defend himself. And it's sickening the fact, again, another incident with the press and the media. They really hate this, Pogba. They that, hate the that's, guy. That thing is the black sheep in the in the, in the team. He's the you know he is the black sheep, the like, grey sheep, the yellow sheep, everything. the pink sheep. He's all the sheep colours. Whenever <laughs> something goes wrong for Manchester United or anything that got to do with Pogba, mm -hmm. he's taking the blames, mm -hmm. bro. Do you remember last season he was injured? He wasn't even playing and still Dude, were Graham taking Graham Souness was on his oh, own. Oh, he's, he's at a wedding dancing. But do you know oh, what? Hey. I hope one day people sit back and watch our show. We just want to let you know we actually do care about you. We don't 
think. We believe you do an amazing job as a person. You got a very good character. And the only thing I could say is stop giving people in the media things to talk about. But the thing about Pogba, he's changed. He's actually mm -hmm. seen all this. He's not doing his um, dramatic hairstyles. Yeah, he's not. He's no longer posting himself dancing or enjoying life. You know, you know. One thing that annoys me. Well, why about, should you stop doing what you love doing? Because that's Before music. That's what he they love use. dancing. That's mm -hmm. what they used against him. And you know what's so funny? Do you know what's so funny, guys? It's the fact that you're out here attacking a man who is a family man who don't drink, mm. who don't smoke, smoke, who don't, who doesn't end up in the pub drinking sixty pints like. And punch up someone. Punch up someone. Or, 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 or on the beach, drunk like Grealish. And, oh, and then you got the media, oh, that. what a lad. Big Phil, what a lad. In the pub with a guy drinking 50 pints of beers and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't do any of these things. All he does is don't bust a couple of dance moves. Chill. It's always with his mum, always with his brothers. But yet, he's a bad apple. He's, he's not a good person. He's this and that. I don't understand. I he's, don't understand. He's, he's, he's African, right? And French at the same time. But one thing that I think fans don't know about French people is that French people got passion for dancing. They love dancing. And they love colouring their hair. Like, if you know French people, like African French people, they love dancing. Like one thing they really don't know. If you go to France right now in Paris, you'll see dancing. a bag of men with pink hair, green hair, yellow hair. No, or it's just different the dance. Of hairstyles, all sorts showing off. Bling, bling, all this kind of stuff. You just don't understand. It's a stress reliever. It's a stress reliever. It makes you relieve stress. It takes your mind off negativity. Mm -hmm. He used to dance. I witness him dancing. I see the smile, the grin in his face when he's doing his moves. <laughs> now we know what dancing does us. It just <laughs> takes that pain, whatever you're going through. So if the media saying they're talking that about Pogba, why can't he go dance? If it's that's gonna take him, like make him forget about whatever situation he's going through. I hope he sues their ass. Like, we need to be factual with what we say, uh... and we need to be not, how can I say, I think the world itself, not just football, the world itself is selfish and biased. Why do want, just one individual to keep taking L's or any, all type of blames? It's hard. It's sickening. We need to stop this. He's just a human like us, you know? I'll be very honest. I, I know why he's getting it. I know why it's getting it. You know why it's yeah, getting it. Yeah, but I don't want to say it. But we're not going to say, say it, it because it's a sensitive subject at the end of the day. Some people are not ready for these conversations. And me, I'm, I'm always <laughs> one to have these conversations, you know. If you ever want to have this conversation, hit me up on my Twitter. I'll give you some therapy. Uh, hit us up in the in mm. DMs and that. We will talk about this proper. But it's something that needs to be, I think, needs to be aired out. Do you, do you have you? anything to say briefly on this? Do you know what? Again, we spoke about this a few weeks ago. What these media outlets say, negative or positive, it doesn't really affect me. It's like a, a water off a duck's back because <laughs> for the fact they can't even check their sources, the Sun is supposed to be a reputable newspaper for the UK. They can't even check their sources and they're still bringing out such stupid, inf stupid information, stupid news about Pogba being dropped from the France squad or Pogba leaving the France squad. Not great. And I'm, again... No surprise. With Pogba, there always comes bad news. And it's a shame that we have to defend his hairstyle, we have to defend his dancing, all of these stuff. Mm -hmm. Because growing up, as a United fan, I love to see Beckham with a different hairstyle every one or two weeks. He played the most, he, was, he got the most expensive, how do you call it? Thank hairstyle. you. No. Oh, Thank you. It was, let me finish, mm -hmm. always on the front of the sun, them times, or draw the middle as a positive thing. Look what Ooh, look at Beckham's new hairstyle. He back. got mentioned to change to bring fashion into football. Yeah. Beckham. Of course. So why can't Pogba do it? Like I said, I already said this before. I know why he gets it. I know why Beckham doesn't get it. Or I know why he gets it and I know why certain people like Pickford or like Jack Grillish or Ch Wilkshire. I remember him. I remember him <laughs> abroad <laughs> On the floor, smoking cigarettes, in the swimming pool, swimming pool. <laughs> so, right. We've seen a whole lot of things, but when a different character does it, it's something that they talk about it for all the Lord knows. Yeah, and guys, let's uh, move it straight up. Um, guys, I want you guys to just—I just want to raise this mental health 
awareness. We have a young Jeremy who lost, who committed suicide. I, unfortunately, he committed suicide because, of course, he was released by Manchester City's football club. Um, very sad, very sad news to see a young boy. All he knew was just to be a professional footballer, to be released, must have crushed him and didn't know what to do. And these are the things that I would like to just raise awareness of, guys, because mm -hmm. you don't know what people are going through behind closed doors, especially mm -hmm. these young footballers dreaming to become, you know, superstars. superstars. And then just to, to be told no. They've no, got role models, they look no, up to you. You know, just to be told no, it's, it's, it's hurtful. And guys, the, the young boy lost his life, you know, he took his life away because of that. And. <clears throat> May so rest in peace. Our condolences to all, to all his family and friends, mm -hmm. and we really feel sad. And we hope of a young gen like this young generation of players could learn from this mm -hmm. and do the right choice. Like he, like he said, if you ever going through any mental health some um, um situation, there are helps. Go on the internet and check. During this corona period, the government. In this country have actually given out plenty information based on my mental health and it's like you can often tell my voice changed because that's something that I actually actually do care about when it comes to life seeing a young talent a young person he got the opportunity and power to become here what they want to become in life just that i can't like I, i'm getting emotional like i pray that the youngsters our young generation could see this and take the positive out of this and try in case they find themselves in that situation talk to family members mm -hmm. talk to your close friends mm -hmm. yes. call for help mm -hmm. you have to pray pray if you have mm -hmm. to no you don't even have to if, even if you don't believe in it pray pray it helps pray helps james what, what do you have to say about this uh, first and foremost to jeremy weiston's family and friends our condolences um he was a young 17-year-old Manchester City player. He had joined them from the age of 14, I believe. I believe, yeah. Um, it's just such a sad time to be in. 2020, on top of this coronavirus, on top of everything else that's happening, we don't know what exactly was happening in his life. Maybe this was just the last point. But um, please, youngsters, like my boy Amok said, if you are going through anything at all that you feel that you can't personally deal with, you have people that you can speak to. Speak to your friends, speak to your family. If you're here watching now, drop us a message and we can have a conversation. We can talk to you. It's all about talking, you know? You don't, um, have to manche you don't have to be Manchester fan. Exactly. You don't have to be Manchester fan. Um, I also feel that clubs, it happens a lot where a lot of youngsters are dropped. Um, mm -hmm. The likes of Eze, who now plays for Crystal Palace, before joining QPR and smashing it in the championship last season, he was dropped by Arsenal, he was dropped by QP, um, not QPR, he joined QPR, but he was dropped by a couple of clubs, and Neil yep. Wall as well. Yeah, Youngsters, persevere. Unfortunately, setbacks will happen, but as long as you're talking to people that love you and you continue with your efforts, sure. life will be good. So please, persevere and stay safe. Cool, let's wrap this up. Of course, guys, you know we are playing Arsenal on Sunday. Yep, 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 yep. Those gooners again. Hopefully we get we, hopefully we, we whoop their ass, bro. They need to get it. They need to get it. We need to give it to them. We're playing at Old Trafford. And it's been a while since us being us at Old Trafford. We need to get our first win in the Premier League at Old Trafford. So why not? It's a good occasion. Mm -hmm. True. You know? I, I'm I'm feeling a bit optimistic. It's a little bit optimistic, you know. Cause it's Arsenal. Cause it's Arsenal. But then again, we can always lose. You know, it's football. I I hope. Um, I believe we'll win. I believe we will win. Sheik, what about you? Straight win. Straight win. Straight win. Straight win. Two no or three nil. Straight he ain't joking. Win. Yeah. And what, what do you what do you think? Um, I don't want to. I'm an optimistic person, but I don't want to say straight win because I've seen where Arsenal coming through. They lost the last match against Leicester. They didn't play bad. It was just so. They dominated. It's just a smashing hit, mm -hmm. and that scares me a little bit. And I would say Manchester obviously is going to win. We should win. We need to win. And it's, it's going to be a close match, a very close match. It ain't going to be easy taking for Manchester United at all. So I, if I was to predict a, predict a goal line, it would be 2 1 or 3 1. Cool. And guys, it's been wonderful. We have come to the end of the show. Of course, remember, guys, always subscribe, smash that like button, also share to your friends. 
your ex-girlfriends as well if you want to, you know, just to piss her off. Do that for me, you know. Hear me. And guys, remember, hashtag NSARS. True. As always. As always. And we're not going to stop until all of this is done. All of this is done. And it's stopped. You know? And, and of course, Amok, my guy, where can these lovely people find you? On Instagram. My Instagram is um, um, prettyflacco underscore 16. As usual. And Jex? Where can they find you on the socials? Yeah, Mook, that was quick today. You know? I know. Uh, the last one, the last two videos, uh, two videos been quick. That's I have to be making. They have to though. Uh, Instagram, you can find me on Jegs underscore United. Jegs underscore United. And of course, guys, you know the score as always with me. Subscribe to the channel, of course, and remember to follow the, the official Instagram, which is Red United TV One. And also, you can follow me on my personal Instagram, which is Ivorian underscore Spice. Also on Twitter, as always, the same thing. And remember, guys, as always, remember to keep it united and keep it red united. We are out. See you next week.